I have to sort a lot of photos. So I will be building a simple light box to quickly view all those negatives and film slides. For this project, I will be reusing some parts of the flatbed scanner ride assembled in a previous episode, and adding other components salvaged from other projects. And of course while working, always make sure to use appropriate protective equipment. The first part of this project will be to build a light element. For that, I will be reusing some electrical wires to build two electrical rails. White wires for the positive rail. Black wires for the negative rail. While building that project, I realize that I do not know everything and probably could do things better. If you spot anything that I could have done different or in a cleverer way, just leave it in the comments. And you do not even have to be civil, as long as you explain. Just also note, that I make projects only reusing components I already have. This is not to be cheap, but because I refuse to embrace the throwaway culture, seeing valuable items being disposed when they could be recycled or reused. This somewhat limits the range of possibilities, but forces me to be creative. In any cases, this is a chance to learn a lot. Here you see me stripping the insulation in the middle of the wire. The reason will become obvious in a second. But before, time for some random horse sound. Some of the solder joints I made here are far from pretty. One because I'm not a master at it. And second because my soldering iron has seen better days. I have actually invested into a new soldering iron with a little more power. So something to try in future projects. This completes the build of my positive rail. Time now to build the negative one using a similar approach. As the soldering iron finally reaches temperature, the solder flows better and the joints look cleaner. Fumes are also gaining in intensity and advice, of course to avoid breathing them as they can be toxic. Some folks use a fan to blur the fumes away. Some use a respirator. I personally stopped breathing for 12 minutes. I'm adding at the end of the rails a connector that matches my power supply. 
It is important at this stage to make sure the right wires connect at the right place. For me, the positive white wire needs to connect at the center. Just to quickly isolate and clean everything a little electric tape is added to the build. Almost look now that I know what I'm doing. For the lights, I'm using 6 disc LED lights that I no longer need in my kitchen. This is all I had at the time and although it ended up being fit for purpose, with hindsight, more lights would have been better. I used this method to connect the lights as I did not want to alter the LED with solder. Using stranded wire is here important since it allows me to press fit the pins of the LED tightly inside the wire. The power supply I selected provides the right polarity, right voltage and has enough wattage to serve the six lights. When testing the circuit, you can see the light intensity changing. This is not the light that changes but the camera that adapted its exposure due to the brightness of the light. In real life, the light output remained constant. We can now mount our custom light into the body of our salvaged flatbed scanner. This will be a closed enclosure with a few holes. As I was concerned about temperatures, I let the lamps run for a full hour. Changes in temperature inside the box were negligible, so the LED will be fine. To diffuse the lights, I'm using a simple sheet of wax paper. And the final result. A simple homemade light box. Could it be better made? Sure, especially with a little more light. But in my case, it is a one-time purpose device to review slides that will no longer be used after that. So, fit for purpose for what I need today, and to be pulled apart and recycled when I'm done with it, tomorrow.